Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP video. In this video, we are going to take a look and just introduce the topic of, of a new module. I don't know if it's actually new, new. Uh, the, the release notes don't really point to it that I can see, but there's a module that I just found, folks, and I'm gonna set up a series of videos on this new module. I really don't want to uh, make a super long video about this module and try to cram everything into it. I think I'm gonna chunk it out into smaller videos. And as an educator, this new module really gets me giddy. And that is a new module that you can add by clicking on the plus here, right? You've got the plus sign and it's called learn stats. So previously I knew there was a learn base and I've had that and I have a few videos on those if you want to go check them out on the channel, but there's this new learn stats module and I clicked on it because I saw it the other day when I updated to 0 0.18 and I was like, huh, I don't think I've seen that before. There's kind of a learn stats module or just like stats basics module package that you can add to Jamovi, but I hadn't seen one here. So let's click on this and it's going to add it to my bar and uh, it is not a module that you need any uh, data open. So it's really just going to be the JASP window that we're going to hang out in. And so here it is. It goes up to learn base because um, I believe after the main set, it is in alphabetical order. I really think Jamovi should follow the footsteps in that one. So we've got our L's here. So I've done learn Bayes, or I've done all that I could with learn Bayes. Um, and so if you want to learn how to do Bayesian statistics, some of this might be able to help. But learn stats is your frequentist uh, models and uh, the basic conceptual ideas of statistics in uh, these these stat modules. So uh, we're going to do normal distribution in this video, and then I'm going to do the other ones in their separate videos. And we're going to, I'm going to look at the statistical decision tree uh, one. I, I don't know what that, what that one's going to be with. I haven't looked through all of these yet. And so, you know, between, I'm going to make all of these videos. So I hope you stay tuned for this little mini series of the learn stats module. So learn stats module, let's talk about the uh, normal distribution in this video. Again, just a quick, quick overview and then we're going to look at some of these others just really quickly saving them for another video so let's go into normal distribution okay so it's going to open up the normal distribution sub module or the functions okay and one thing to note which is why i think it's new and it just hasn't didn't get on the release notes is that it has this disclaimer here this analysis is in, is in development and has just a beta status okay so there are some things that you might want to jot down if you encounter some errors we'll go ahead and make this video a record of any bugs or errors that we see here okay so the how you do use these functions is you go through the process here you got to put in your distribution you got to put in all of the stuff that you want um if when i put in a distribution here uh, i might be able to have the ability to generate and display data which requires a loaded data set so you'll have to go through the process that uh, a previous video had where you make a new uh, data set estimate parameters requires a loaded data set and assess fit requires a loaded data oh so each module is going to have you uh, look through the main functions here. So for obviously normal distribution, we're going to be changing the distribution. Um, if I had a data set open, I'd be able to generate and display data um, of the things that I'm changing here or use that information, right? Uh, be able to put in my mean and variance and everything from a loaded data set. I could estimate new parameter or new, new parameters from a loaded data set, or I could assess fit. So I'll open up a data set so we can mess around with that. Okay, so here I am with my uh, data open. Okay, so now we have access to these and um, I've set it up to where you can see all three because I, I'm not quite sure, but when I open the normal distribution um, module again from under learn stats, uh, it opened over here. So I pulled it and now I can have all three. I don't know if this is, uh, I honestly don't remember this being normal behavior, but in any case, we can see all three. So here we are in the normal distribution and because I have a data set open, we can generate new data. Um, we'll go through some of these options here. Um, estimate parameters. It looks like we in normal distribution, we have maximum likelihood, and then we can assess the fit by using flots or, uh, flots <laughs> using plots or other statistics that, uh, we can, we, we can use on normally distributed data, which is great. Okay. So I'm going to, um, collapse this here. Cause I just want to quickly show the other ones and then we'll go back to normal distribution. We've got the binomial distribution, similar things. You can change the, the details and parameters of, of the binomial distribution. You can do all of the other stuff that we had look, seen before. So I'm going to collapse that. And we're going to go to central limit theorem. Central limit theorem has something different, right? And you can show uh, it has all of these things to show and, and change the means and standard deviations. And we can change the way that the uh, plots show up change the sampling distribution options, okay, plot options. Okay, so that's that one. And then we have standard error to tell students how standard error works. So I honestly could just pull this up in my class and be like, okay, so I just told you what standard error is. Uh, and now let's see what happens when we change the standard error. Uh, that is that one, then you can do descriptive statistics, okay, enter sequence, random sample, all of that. Again, we'll do a video on that one. You can talk about sample var variability and change the sample. And again, this is what happens when you sample, uh, uh, do a bunch of different samples. Um, looks like they, this is, odd, this is an odd thing to me. Uh, they have decided to use NR as the abbreviation for number it's first. P values. Oh boy, this one's a, this one's a big one. We're gonna definitely go through the p values uh, module. 
confidence intervals, okay? We have all of the confidence intervals, so you can teach how confidence intervals work. This is really good. Fewer options in that in that module uh, based on what it is. Effect size is Cohen's D, rho, or uh, the phi coefficient, the contingency coefficient that you would uh, get an effect size for uh, cross tabs or uh, test of independence. And um, yeah, you can change all of that there. And then finally, the statistical decision tree test. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, I like that. Ooh, I might have my students. But well, this will tell you, this will give you every uh, parametric test and every alternative because it goes through and highlights green what you're looking for. That is great. Okay, video on that one. Definitely a video on that one. Okay, let's go up to normal distribution, uh, which was here at the top. Okay, so we got it open. I had to close all the other ones because the the, uh, the results weren't loading anymore. Uh, it's because it's, it's a dynamic it's a dynamic window, so it's constantly updating, and it just didn't like all those things, all of those submodules open. Okay, so here we go. By default, you are given a uh, mean and variance value of zero and one to give you your standard, uh, which you know uh, the square root of one is one, so standard deviation of one. Okay, so this is your standard normal distribution it means we can change that. Okay, some of the checkbox options that we get for this are the explanatory text. So this is really great because it comes with references and I always love references and one of those is Wikipedia, which is really helpful. Okay, so demonstration of the normal distributions. Demonstration is divided into four parts. So this is the instructions for the module here. The first part displays the normal distribution, its probability density curve, so we can get that as well, the door density function, cumulative distribution function, and quantile function. Second part allows you to generate data, which is right here, from the normal distribution, compute descriptive statistics, and display descriptive plots, which is right here. The third part allows you to estimate parameters, which is right here, of the normal distribution. And then the fourth part allows you to check the fit of the normal distribution to the data. So we'll go ahead and play with that, all of those parts here. Now, the probability density function is the one that you get first, and it's the one that is checked by default. We'll get that one in just, we'll, we'll talk about the other ones in just a second. The PDF is usually denoted as f of x as a function of a random variable x. The value of f of x provides the relative likelihood that a realization of the random variable x yields a value equal to x which is what we're estimating here with mu. More formally, the PDF is defined as the derivative of a cumulative distribution function, or CDF, and we'll show that one in just a second as well. The density plot displays the probability density function of a random variable. The y-axis displays the value of the density function for a particular value of a random variable displayed on the x-axis. So random variable x and its density, which is the derivative of the CDF. So what is the CDF? Well, let's open, let's click on that one, and it comes down below. CDF looks like this, okay? Uh, value function of x will give us the probability. So over, uh, and we're moving, here left to right to get from zero to three. But you know, if you were in a, a, a country, no, actually I don't think math plays by those rules for right to left reading. The cumulative distribution function CDF, usually denote as a big f of x, is a function of random variable x. The value of f of x provides the probability that a realization of the random variable x yields a value that is equal to or smaller than x. So that's part of the definition, right? So over here at this standard value of three on my x is equal to a probability of one because I've been moving from equal to or smaller. That's why it's left to right. Cumulative probability displays the CDF of a random variable. X axis is cumulative distribution function for a particular value of the random variable displayed on the X axis. So that's that. Now, the third one that we can show is the quantile function. Again, this is our standard normal curve. So the quantile function is going to look nice and pretty with its uh, curves here at the very top and bottom of the probability. Essentially, the quantile plot takes the cumulative probability plot and flips it around. The quantile plot function, usually denoted as Q of P, is the inverse of the cumulative distribution function, as you can see. We swapped, and therefore it became the inverse. The function gives the quantile such that the probability of the random variable being less than or equal to the value equals the given probability P. So we can find where the probabilities are on this curve. Quantile plot displays the quantile function. The y-axis displays the quantile, of which the probability of the random variable is less or equal to the value uh, equal to P, displayed on the x-axis. There it is. Okay, so those are our... Uh, our three functions. The last display checkbox here is the parameter support and moments. And so you can see that each of these are in uh, order of display in the results. So you can easily, when you pick something, you know where it's going to end up. So let's take a look at our parameters. We are saying um, the mean is, uh, I actually don't, uh, this, is the, this is the logic functions for our parameters. Uh, support of x being random. Oh, this is random. Mean is random. Variation is random plus. I think that's what that means. So our expected value of x is the mean. And so that is what we are displaying here. The mean is zero, and so that's where the most uh, density is. And then the variance of x is equal to uh, theta squared, or sigma squared, excuse me, not theta, sigma squared, which is one. There you go. Those are parameters, and so we can change those if we want to. Now, by default, this is showing a range from negative three to three, which by default, if we are using the standard normal curve of zero and one, 
that um, negative three to three really does give us 99.97% of all values of X. So you, it, it would only matter to change these things if you are doing something funky with your mean and variance and you want to show um, a deeper range. But, you know, as you get to the standard deviation value of three, so one standard deviation or three standard deviations above and um, three standard deviations below your uh, mean, then I don't really think you need to go beyond that. If we were to change the mean and variance, uh, we could see what that might affect here. So if we change this mean to 20 and we change the variance to six, let's just show you what happens here. It doesn't change the negative three to three. And so what you would want to do is probably put in like a zero and uh, I don't know, uh, 50 to get a better look at your normal curve. And so there you go. Actually, I didn't need to go zero to 50 because that just represents a pointy curve. So we could actually do uh, 10 and uh, 35 to be a little bit. And you got to make sure you click off of the thing to actually activate the change. There you go. Even 30 is is too big because what I did, seven, six. So 26, 32. Yeah. So standard deviation. So 32 and then uh, 12. So if I wanted to do the same thing too, and it would look just like the normal curve I had up here, maybe a little different. I don't like that it got, got cut off there. But anyways, so we're going to change this back to, to uh, uh, zero and one, just so it's nice and purdy. So negative three and... I don't, you know what? I didn't go, I didn't go to the right. I did uh, two standard deviations, not three. It should have been a difference of 18 on both sides, on all sides, I think. No, I wasn't, I was, sorry. I was, uh, didn't squ square my, didn't square root my, uh, I'm a dummy. <laughs> I'm a silly dummy. I was uh, doing uh, six, <laughs> I was doing six as the standard deviation, not the variance. So I should have square rooted six. I shouldn't have made it six. I should have made it like uh, as perfect square, like nine or something like that. So I could have done threes, but that's where I got into trouble. All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, weekend brain for 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 you all who can see that it's Saturday. All right, so I've got my normal curve up here again. Uh, the final highlights that I want to do here is you can show density and you can change your interval. So from zero to one, or you can do from minus two to two. You can show uh, your students here, or if you're learning yourself, what happens to the density value, right, um, at each of the places on the point. You can also show probability which will give you the value in between. So density gives you the density value. Probability gives you a colored inversion, okay? And um, our interval here can be from zero to one. You can do from minus infinity to zero. Uh, there we go. And of course, it's, it's always going to be from negative infinity because if you are of the generation of having to use Z tables to get probabilities, you all, you, there were many ways to do it, but many times it was value from negative infinity up. And so you were uh, going, you were using the uh, tables this way. So this is just a table inside here that's giving you an exact uh, probability value. So you could do it that way, or you could do it from the other way, which is, an, which is how you have to find intervals. But this is great because um, I have students do this with Z tables. You don't have to use a Z table now. You can just use this. You can give them a bunch of problems and have them just use the function to find out what the lovely color is in here because it will chunk it out for you, which I think is absolutely amazing. Okay, so those are the options for how to show uh, how to show normal distributions. Of course, you can get those uh, slope lines for uh, the probability, right? And that gives you the 0 0.34, 0 0.84 minus 0.5 is 0 0.34. You do not get those on the quantile plot, though. I did actually forget to mention that you can change your parameters here. You can use um, mean and variance. You can use mean and standard deviation. Probably should have done that already. Um, you can use mean and uh, tau, and then you can use mean and k. Um, so probably should have done that to start us off, right? Nothing's going to change about my graphs or anything like that. But um, this is, uh, it changes the parameters up here. Um, variance, it didn't say variance, it didn't change variance of x though, which I thought was interesting. Anyways, so um, probably would have done that. I probably would have taught it this way as well with uh, mu and sigma, uh, mean and standard deviation instead of mean and variance. All right, so let's go ahead and um, do a generate and display data next. So I'm going to collapse show distribution here. So let's just do our zero and one right here. So what we're going to do is um, a variable name and we're going to call this a random uh, normal curve, uh, curve, okay, which is funny because that was what it was suggested. So that's why the tooltip came up. Okay, so it makes the new variable right here, and we're going to draw samples. Uh, it, we're going to do 10 samples, and we're going to draw samples. Okay, so I'm going to pull this just a little bit so you can see. Okay, and so it just pulled a random, basically, Z, set of z-squares for this. Okay, we can also do it with a uh, generating our, uh, generating the pictures from our data set, right? Oh, here we go. It's down here. Overview, test scores, right? So um, basically drawing descriptives. Um, we can also add first two observed moments. We can grab a, a histogram with 30 bins, which will do this. Um, if we increase our bins, 50 bins, and hit enter, it does that, right? Or we can do, uh, make it bigger with like five bins, right? Big fat, fat ones, okay? And then we can get our empirical cumulative distribution and see what the curve would uh, look like. The cumulative distribution function from the data, so it's a little choppy. It's not infinite values of X, 
It's uh, observed values of X. Of course, we're using test score here. So generate new data is for a random uh, sample of data for a new variable. And then you can get dis descriptives for your existing variables. And I can also uh, grab this, um, this one here and get our normal curve uh, data. It's only again going to be 10 samples. And so we got kind of a normal curve, but there were a lot of over one or close to ones. Yeah, 1 1.2 and yeah, there you go. So it gives you the data, it gives you the observed moments, and then you can get a histogram and an empirical one. All right, so let's close that. So that's how you do generate display data. And then we can estimate our parameters by hitting the maximum likelihood. And this will give us, this is the most common uh, estimation of parameters is through maximum likelihood. And so we can get estimates, okay, of our uh, mean and standard deviation. We can also get our standard error and then the confidence interval of our estimate. I'm just gonna keep, uh, just reloaded everything. Okay, still working on it. Ooh, is it struggling? It's having a little bit of a conniption fit. Okay, let's uncheck confidence interval. Hopefully it'll stop giving us conniption fit here. Okay, there's a bug here. Okay. Again, just beta. Um, it does this thing. Okay, let's get standard error off. Ooh, maybe I caught it in a loop now. Ooh, boy. Let's turn off maximum likelihood. I hit stop generating. No, I don't want to remove it. Ooh, boy, got caught in a loop, y'all. Okay, another quick cut here. Sorry. The um, it got caught in a uh, in a in a in a loop trying to get the estimated parameters. So there seems to be a bug associated with the estimate parameters in the normal distribution function, which I think is a bit of a bummer, but that's all right. So we'll go ahead and close that. Uh, what it what it will do is it will estimate. Um, actually, let's go back to this one. It will estimate the mean and the standard deviation via maximum li likelihood and give you standard error and confidence interval data if it doesn't get caught in a loop. I'm not going to try it again because I'm just, I I I want to get through the video here. <laughs> all right. You can get additional plots. So this is assessing fit. So this is going to open up new uh, collapsibles here. So histogram versus theoretical probability density function, right? So it's going to open up a histogram. Oh, and maximum likelihood wanted me to wanted me to do it. Okay, come on now. You can do it. Ooh, is it uh, is it busted here? It doesn't even look like it's doing anything. So let's turn that off again. Let's try that again. Okay. Shows it's working. Can we do it? No. Okay. So the histogram versus theoretical PDF does not work. Also, it didn't get rid of my maximum likelihood. It shouldn't be there. Collapse. All right. That shouldn't be there anymore. Oh, well. Let's see if the QQ plot is working, huh? Well, folks, it looks like it is buggy. I've been sitting here for a little while. Um, I've clicked on everything. I was curious whether or not it needed maximum likelihood estimates to um, estimate parameters to be able to assess the fit of the, those estimated parameters. Um, and nothing's loading. Nothing's loading. I don't have the normal, the, the um, loading spinner either side. Computer's, I think, kind of struggling with it. All right, so it is in development. So these two may not currently be working. So st stay tuned for those. I'm sure they'll be updated. So stay tuned for those. But still a great distribution module for teaching because you can show what happens. And it's got great definitions of what this is. Of course, math, uh, strong math vocabulary is needed for some of this text. So, I mean, you could, if you're teaching with this module, I would uh, update some of this these names with, uh, you know, something a little more palatable than um, the derivative of a, cumulative, of a cumulative distribution function, even though that's what it is. I get it. I get it. All right. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or feedback, please leave those in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Bye.